Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all well. And welcome to part two of AIW creation in R Factor 2. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna run through the creation of a fastest lap um, or line. And then we're gonna uh, run through the little tweaks that we have to do to make sure that the AI runs smoothly on it. We're gonna do pit entry, pit exit, and crossing the line. We'll then save the AIW out. We'll um, package it up so that then you can uh, understand how you get it into uh, the normal um, game mode of R-Factor 2 and test against AI. So, um, and then next video I'll probably do how to create a blocking line um, um, and then package that up as well. So, what we need to do is, when you're going to create the fastest line, treat it as if you were hot lapping. Um, if, you, if you've got a, uh, a setup for the car that you want to run, I suggest using it because it makes it obviously makes the car more stable and will give you a, a quicker hot lap, a quicker smoother hot lap, which is important. So let's hit the track. It might take me a little bit just to get this um, boat of a BMW out onto the track here because it's a pretty tight pit area and, and road surface at Cabo. I've probably chosen the wrong car for this. So what we want to do is maneuver our way onto the track and over here select your AIW editor. You'll now see the AIW path uh, depending on whether this is the first time you've run this or not, or how to play around on it, you'll see this like as it is right now with pure waypoints. So here's your here's your main path, and here's your pit exit joining up over here. Um, click your path sub menu, and you might actually it might be displaying like this. Now I find this distracting when I'm putting a hot lap down, so I tend to turn it off. So the only thing you really need to do is make sure when you're setting your fastest lap that you've got your current path as the fastest set here and click record a new best lap. So all we need to do now is head out onto track and put a fast time down that beats the previous time and it won't start recording obviously until you have reached the start finish line. So what I'll do is I'll head out, I'll try and hit a new fastest lap around here. I'll put a couple down now so that actually might be quite difficult. And uh, once I've got that recorded, I'll come back um, show you that last lap that I did and then we'll start with another line. So see you soon guys. Okay, cool. So we actually got a best lap time then. It wasn't the cleanest, but it'll do for this demonstration. So we will exit out now and we will save that AIW like so. Log building pit. And there we go. So we've got a 127.52 for that lap. So now what we do is we hit race, we head back Take out onto track. Yeah. So again, I apologize for this gigantic car. Did choose the wrong vehicle for this, but anyway. Okay, so here we go. So what I'll do is, you click back onto the AIW editor, you hit the pass submenu button, and then you make the fastest lap visible like that. Uh, now what I do is I would recommend that you jump into the top view, and we'll we'll move forward and we'll start working on the join of the pit exit to the main racing line or the fastest line. 
So what you want to do is just move forward. And what you're aiming to do here is to make sure that the there is a smooth transition from the pit exit line into the fastest line. As you can see, it overlaps here, so it's not going to be smooth. Um, I'll go through a couple of ways of doing this, um, but I'll go through the I'll, I'll actually do the whole process with the way I do it normally. So as you can see here, this line or this pit exit line has already been joined to the fastest line. So when you select um, multiple points um, for working lines, you can actually join them together. So if you select these, you've got connections and then you can join this branch. So that's what's been done here with the pit exit and the racing line at this point here. That's why you don't see um, a pit exit um, waypoint anymore. So what we'll do is we'll go back here and we will find, which is, I, th I believe that that there is the pit exit line. Let's see. Yes, it is. So I'll just go over some um, quick little tips. So you can select and unselect or deselect. You can multi-select and, and unselect them. Um, and you can also, you know, you can group, group select as I just did. Um, you can select multiple points and work on multiple points at the same time if you want to. Uh, now we'll go through, just quickly go through the manipulation controls. So grab a waypoint like so. If you want to move it left and right, you hold down left shift and your left and your left and right arrow keys. So what I want to do is I want to move this line here so it overlays nicely on top of the racing line. Um, you know what you can do is you can overlay like the first two points on the line as so and then you can group select all the way back to your pit exit and then you can go manipulations if you want to and normalize the curve and what that will do is it will create a smooth transition for you but what I've also found that it does is sometimes it will mess around with the speed that is associated with the waypoint. So I prefer to adjust these entry and exit waypoints manually. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, I'll leave the recording running and work through it. Uh, make sure I'm in reverse so I can just keep moving back and selecting these. A lot I'm trying to do is just move these so they overlay nicely on top of the racing line. So when the AI come out of the pits, they join back at speed and just transition with the rest of the cars. What you don't want is jerking lines like this because what it does is it causes, as you're probably aware, it causes the AI to break um, harshly and, and then change direction erratically, which causes accidents. So we'll just keep doing this, we'll move back. I'm doing it obviously quite slowly, um, but I just want you guys to get an idea of what goes into doing this and the fact that if you do it properly, you get good results at the end. I will also touch on some of the other manipulations that you can do um, once we've done this. back so initially when you're doing it I would suggest that you um, you just tap the key a couple of times when you're selecting waypoints just to make sure that you've got the right waypoint because you don't want to um, select the, the racing line waypoint and then just hit hold down the arrow key because you won't know how much to move it back and you will by doing that adjust the speed of that waypoint as well um, so it'll never be um, exactly as it was if you don't get it back in the, the perfect spot and it'll affect your racing line so there we go so that's there we go. so there you go so you've got an, a kind of nice smooth entry onto the racing line now as you can see so the cars will come out of here at speed get onto the racing line without jerking uh, i might even just move this one this way a little bit to make a little bit more of a smooth transition into the next waypoint we might just 
move this one over a little bit as well to kind of make it even smoother. There we go. So once you've done that, we'll just keep reversing back and we'll go over the next really important thing that we have to do, which is when you cross over the start finish line on your hot lap, the point that you start the hot lap at, cross it for the very first time, might not be the same point that you cross the finish line at at the end of the hot lap. So what, what the, uh, the system will do when you're doing it is it will create a jagged line in between or a harsh line in between uh, and that will cause the AI to brake really hard and then change direction, slow right down and it will mess up their lap and obviously if there's anybody behind them they'll crash too. So what we want to do is we want to make a smooth transition between those two lines, those two points, and there you go. So you can see there that it doesn't appear to be that harsh but that will cause the AI to slam on the brakes, change direction and then keep going. So what I what I do is I select these two here, the the waypoint before the start finish line and the waypoint after. And then I will select six points, if I can count, after the line. Now it's important when you do your selections after the line that if you have a um, a short pit exit. Uh, that these kind of overlap with your merge lines that you want to probably take these back a little bit because if you change these it'll affect the way your merge um, happens for your pit exit and then you want to reverse back and select six waypoints for the racing line this way Make that six uh, and then what you want to do is you want to go over to your menu here click manipulations and normalize this curve and when I click it you'll see the line move slightly there we go just a tiny little bit but what it's done is it has smoothed out across all of those waypoints the crossing the line there so then we'll unselect all stick it in reverse and we will drive back to our pit entry and then we have to correct the line um, that breaks off from the racing line here and takes you through the pits Hopefully it's pretty smooth and we don't have to move too much. Oh yeah, just a little bit. Okay, cool. So what you want to do is select this waypoint again and this time we are moving it to the left. So left shift and left arrow. And then we'll do the same here. And we'll just put the first two on the line and then we'll try and make a, a bit more of a smooth transition with less of a harsh curve on that. So it's a smoother transition off the racing line. So when I do it at speed, they won't break hard and they won't cause accidents behind them. So it's actually not looking too bad. Sometimes you have to do quite a lot of manipulation work, um, but this time it actually looks quite good. And then that'll give a smooth transition off the line and into the pits. Okay, so what you want to do now that you've done all that is um, click on the find corridors. That'll find the width of the track, racing corridor, that type of thing. Then you want to save waypoints. We've now saved a new AIW file. Uh, and that's basically it for AIW creation. Now we'll hit Lock escape. We will leave the track. We'll exit um, R Factor 2 dev mode. Uh, and I'll come back and show you how to package up a track for testing. Okay, so we're back on the desktop now. Uh, we've got our R-Factor 2 launcher here and I've navigated to the R-Factor 2 mod dev locations, cable park and assets folder. So what you can see here is that we have the AIW file that we created in that uh, while working on that hot lap. Uh, and there's the backup of the previous one where we started off doing the recording. So. That's that backup, by the way, is created automatically. But I would recommend before you, if you're going to continue iterating on AIWs, just to take a copy yourself um, so you've got another one that you can roll back to and one previous and so forth. Um, so, what you want to do now is go into your, um, and I've covered this before, but I think it's, it's good to do it as part of this, um, this uh, video. So, we'll go into the mass utility, and what we want to do is we want to package this up back into the original uh, RFCMP so that we can test in game mode. So basically what you want to do is you want to go file, open, and from the work that we've been doing before, um, the main mass file is here. So you want to open that main mass file and you want to locate the AIW file that you're going to replace. 
So you go edit, cut that out, and then we'll just um, copy this location, go back into here and go file add, and we'll go to the location that we just copied, and we'll select that ARW file, open it, and then we'll repack that mass file. So click this logo here, this icon, and then that'll do package it up almost immediately and then click on the create package file tab here to create a new rfcmp for um, the track that you're working on so we'll create a single package again wait for it to pop up now as you can see i've already uh, done this before so what we'll do is we'll, we'll, cl we'll clear all this out we'll clear all these out and we'll go through the process again so we want to call this Click add a new component. We want to call this Cadwell can't type park Pulsar. There we go. Okay to that. Now we want to select the location that the file is going to be dropped in. So packages is where they will go. So I'll select that and we will call it Cadwell Park MPSR. As you can see we've done this before. Open. You can select what version you want it to be. Uh, and then you have to say that it is a location. Uh, if you want to add info to it while you're doing this, you can. You can say it's a, a permanent category circuit, um, scratch or conversion, I believe this was a conversion, whoever the author was. And we'll just say here, we're gonna just adjust, uh, wow, adjust ARW, click OK on that. And now we want to add the mass file. So typically I do a select here and just a, a delete because uh, sometimes the files are here but they're hidden um, and then we want to navigate to our install directory locations and find Cadwell Park there it is this is the original obviously that we've just repackaged and then grab all of those mass files select open they'll all be loaded here and if you click package it should say completed with no errors down here and done and click done there so what you can do now is go back into the launcher go to your package manager click refresh you'll find your cadwell park listed as not installed click install um, it should just install okay succeeded and now you can launch r factor 2 in game mode and go and have a run against AI at whatever skill setting you normally would and see how they behave, see if they're competitive with you or not. And then basically it's it's just a process of rinse and repeat. If it's if they're not up to scratch, they're not behaving right, then you need to come back in uh, and either re-record um, what you've done uh, or, or make slight tweaks to certain areas on the track. So what I might do is I might jump back into dev mode and give you an example of what I mean by that. Uh, I'll take a backup of the AIW first and then I'll just show you what you can do um, with slight adjustments to waypoints so we'll load back up into dev mode and I'll see you in two seconds okay so we are back in dev mode uh, and what I wanted to show you was what I was just talking about which was making slight adjustments to individual waypoints uh, if you find that the AI are behaving oddly on corner entry and exit. So what you can do is you can go into AI ed AIW Editor, you can click the Pass Sub Menu, and make sure that you have Visible, Actionable, the fastest lap, and then check this one here, Show Speed Text, and leave it on Calculated. And what that will do is that will show you, the dotted lines mean basically if the car's at maximum acceleration, top speed, you know, it's, co it's kind of off the clock. And then what it will do is, as you come closer into the corner, you'll see that the speed of each of these waypoints, calculate the speed of each of these waypoints, decreases. But what you might find is if you, if you haven't done a smooth lap, the, t the speeds recorded against these waypoints go up and down, up and down, which means that the car, the AI, will brake, accelerate, brake, accelerate, and it'll look really odd as it's going around the corner. So this one actually looks pretty smooth but I'll, I'll show you the adjustments, the kind of adjustments that you can make. So if you find that this waypoint here, for example, is way higher than this one, and then this one is up like this, so you've got an up, down, up, down. Basically, you can select that waypoint, and with your holding left shift, 
and up and down arrows, you can adjust the calculated speed for that waypoint to create a smooth transition. And as I'm doing it, you might see the line adjust slightly. But what you can do is basically a nice smooth acceleration out of the corner like that to stop that jerky motion as the car's going through the bend. So in, in some cases you might have to do that for your entire braking line, it might be all over the place, um, but unfortunately it's just something you might have to go through. If, you, if you're not confident in creating a smooth hot lap and racing line through a corner, but you want to enjoy better racing, then this is just something you're going to have to work through. Um, and once you've done that, all you need to do again is find corridors and save waypoints, exit, repackage and test, and just kind of keep doing that. Um, you might find that it happens at multiple corners, um, so you're just going to have to work through that uh, as you make your way around the track. So yeah, I hope that, I hope that was helpful guys. Uh, if it was, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and I'll see you in part three when we build a blocking line uh, and repackage the whole track and have a race. Thanks everyone. Bye.